So far away, Lucas, what are we talking about today? We're talking about Vinnie Jones, Carl. Oh, the juggernaut. I spilled water on myself. <laughs> Fuck's sake. That's staying in it. Yeah. So far away, Lucas, as I like, you know, try to like just slyly just pat some of the water away off my face. Um, could you tell people at home what we're talking about today? I'm going to try to take another sip very carefully though this time. Yes, yeah, so we are talking about Kane Marco, a.k.a. The Juggernaut. And we'll be referring specifically to the Marvel Wiki, a link to which you can find below. We'll start, as we often do at the beginning, with the basic biographical information about Mr. Juggernaut. And it's the real name, Kane Marco. Which I'm going to say, a fucking strong. That's a really yeah. cool name. Now it's that's like up there. one of those of just... It's not like Tony Masters, but it's yeah. just a strong sounding name. It's just a cool thing. Like, Tony Masters is fucking untouchable. <laughs> like, Tony Masters is so cool. The Taskmaster. Uh, check him out in that Black Widow movie that's never fucking coming out. Anyway, um, current alias, Juggernaut. And it annoys me that it's not The Juggernaut. Yeah. I don't like it. it I, I don't know about you, Lucas, but whenever I think of The Juggernaut, I, in my head, always call him The Juggernaut. Yeah, I don't ever think of just Juggernaut. No, I always call doesn't him sound Juggernaut. powerful enough. It doesn't, no. It doesn't, like, you know, just emphasize or, like, really get across how powerful this man is. And <laughs> speaking of how powerful he is, we'll get to that in a moment. But first, aliases, uh, Blubby, Canhead, Captain Universe, Juggy, Kurth, Ultimate Juggernaut. So, I'm guessing no Blubby and Canhead are just, like, what a fucking Wolverine calls him. Probably, yeah, but, like, no real strong band names in there. I'm pretty disappointed, no. to be honest. Yeah. I thought that Juggernaut... Or the Juggernaut, fuck it, and even I'm doing it now, um, would have better um, aliases than that. But anyway, relatives. Uh, the only one that anyone really needs to care about is Professor Charles Xavier, who's his stepbrother. Oh, yeah, he is. So, uh, Forget Professor that they're X, related, yeah. yeah. Professor X and the Juggernaut are related. Uh, affiliation. This is where you get the band names, mate. You ready? The Disciples of Sitarak. Oh. Oh! And the Crimson Gem of Citra. I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly. But then again, it's a made-up fucking word from a comic book, so who gives a shit? Um, <laughs> is where he de like, derives his power. Um, formerly of the X-Men, uh, the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, totally the United cool. States Army, the New World um, Order, the Exiles, the Legion Accursed, Excalibur, Thunderbolts, and simply, The Worthy. Hmm. That's awesome. The Worthy. Yeah. I'd listen to their album. That sounds awesome. <laughs> oh my god, Lucas. Even his base of operations sound like fucking band names. I'm not going to go through all of them. There's one here that says The Crimson Cosmos. Oh. I want to I listen to their EP. Yeah, I'll that's listen. a fucking prog band right there. That is. Like, they do like 15 minute long guitar solos. You can't stop them. <laughs> uh, then we. Let's see what The fucking Crimson Cosmos. Uh, identity um, known only to the authorities. Um, oh. Citizenship American, marital status single. The fuck's gonna date him? Carl, like, like you can't stop it. You can't. I do like though that one comic where She Hulk sues somebody for spreading a rumor that she had sex with the Juggernaut. Because <laughs> like there's like a, a tabloid paper runs a rumor like oh yeah She Hulk is having sex with the Juggernaut and she fucking texts him to court for it. So like, stop saying oh. I had sex with the Juggernaut. That would be a power couple, though, Carl. Literally a power couple. She also, I, I still can't get over when we talked about She-Hulk in a video once and just mentioned the fact that she fucked Hercules and then didn't call. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. This one, Lucas. Um, gender, male, height, 9 foot 5. Oh. Origin, and this is one people may not know, um, he is a human empowered by the Crimson Gem of Citarac. So he's not a mutant. Um, he has no natural latent mutant abilities. Um, his powers are entirely derived from a mystical source, which we will no doubt discuss in a moment. Oh, I and thought he was a mutant still, though. He's not, no. It's, it's similar to Spider-Man, um, where whenever oh. in the X-Men universe, the Sentinels start hunting down mutants, they always try and track down the Juggernaut. And the Juggernaut's like, I'm not a fucking mutant. Also, I'm basically invincible. Fuck you. <laughs> then you have like comics where Spider-Man's getting chased by Sentinels and he has to call Wolverine to help. <laughs> like, can you please help me? Just, like, there's so many sentinels trying to kill me. I'm not a mutant and they won't listen. They're robots. We'll move on to powers and abilities. We have the Juggernaut's power grid here. People who haven't watched one of these videos before, the power grid in Marvel canon is a 
rating scale from 1 to 7, 1 being an average human, 7 being basically um, godlike. And nothing on the Juggernaut seems out of the ordinary. He has 7 in both durability and strength, which I'm not going to argue about. Yeah, uh, that's about how I expected it to go. And here's the thing though, powers, none. He has no oh. actual powers of his own. All of his powers come directly from the second thing listed, which is demonic empowerment. So the Juggernaut is empowered by the Crimson Gem of Citarak, which bonds to the user's soul and makes them the avatar of Citarak. And that then gives them the powers and the new body to allow them to you know, carry out Citarak's orders. And apparently Citarak's orders require uh, the use of a near 10 foot tall bulletproof man who can like moonwalk through mountains. I didn't realise that, like, well, it makes sense that it's a different body because, yeah, if he's just a normal nine foot tall man, that's ridiculous, but still. Yeah, it's like when he's empowered by the gem, it gives him, like, you know, the new body, which is, um, you know, the Juggernaut's body. It's like, fucking hell. So, thus far in his comic career, the Juggernaut has displayed the following powers Nigh Limitless Strength. And I love the way that's written. <laughs> that's so cool, Nigh Limitless. So, the Juggernaut is sometimes listed to possess virtually limitless superhuman strength and other times simply as class 90 or 100 and i believe those mean that they can bench 90 to 100 tons uh, but class 100 basically means they can do anything over that and it's just so ridiculous at that point that you might as well just say it's infinite it says oh, okay. using, um, using this immense strength the juggernaut was able to knock out the thing with three blows colossus and even merged hulk um, the latter through repeated surprise ambush tactics and four. <laughs> like, imagine how fucking stupid you're going to feel when a nine foot tall, near one ton man sneaks up on you. <laughs> how does that work? I don't That's know. That's some skill right there. I've never heard of Juggernaut using like sneaky ambush tactics. <laughs> it doesn't really sound like his uh, raison d'etre, does it? But apparently he's no. quite sneaky, who'd have thunk it? Um, so he has proved strong enough to match the highly strong Prime in a fight, knocked out several mutants with a single clap, and even once toppled the Stranger with one punch after he grew to about 50 feet tall. <laughs> uh, he was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against an enraged World War Hulk, as well as the Mighty Thor. So Holy potentially shit. two of the strongest um, beings in all of Marvel canon, with the Hulk yeah. basically being ridiculous, as we've covered in another video. Like, the fact he can even go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, I think it's like five minutes he lasts. And if I'm remembering their fight correctly, because part of Juggernaut's power set is that he cannot be stopped once he begins moving in a, a given direction, um, mm. the Hulk just throws him into orbit. <laughs> and, and that's, that's one way to stop him. And that's how he counters him. So he says, hey, that... Um, also, when empowered greatly by absorbing energies from a magical universe, the Juggernaut broke multiple dimensional barriers and was able to split the space-time continuum whose fissures was expanding throughout the universe in which he was located. <laughs> so he once <laughs> ran through an entire dimension. That's how fast he is. Oh, is. what a comic book. He, I love comics so much. Like He split a universe <laughs> apart. He just ran through space-time. Like, he's so unstoppable, even the fucking dimensional rift can't stop him. Invulnerability. With his force field, wait, what? Active, Kane what? is virtually invulnerable to all forms of physical injury. Kane can be harmed by high level mental attacks, mystical attacks, or weapons with mystical properties. When the Juggernaut's force field was negated by Mjolnir, he was still durable enough to exchange blows with Thor. Because that's fair. So he has an impenetrable force field that protects him from all harm, but he's also indestructible without it. When does he have a force field? What? That's what his power is, which I'm assuming we'll get to in a moment. Um, regenerative healing factor. Despite his invulnerability, it's possible that the Juggernaut can be injured. If damaged, Kane possesses a regenerative healing factor that enables him to completely regenerate with superhuman speed. For instance, he has been injured by Shatterstar's sword and healed instantly. The demon being, Despair, once flayed the Juggernaut down to a skeleton, and even then, the Juggernaut was able to regenerate all the damage done and regain his full power, which we've talked about oh, in another video. Yeah. Do you remember, Lucas, where even oh, when just, he's a skeleton... He can't be stopped. He's yeah, just a um, raging skeleton monster. Um, just glowing with red sex energy. Um, Self-sustenance. The Juggernaut is completely self-sustained. He has no need to breathe, eat, or drink. He does not tire, hence, he cannot sleep. However, his self-generating mystical energies provide him with all the nourishment he needs. Um, he is sustained by his mystical energies alone. He once even kept talking and fighting after being reduced to a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is fucking terrifying. A 10-foot-tall, red-glowing skeleton. Shit-talking you. 
as he's just like still busting through fucking walls. And dimensions. Uh, immortality. The juggernaut is immune to aging and has sometimes been depicted or implied to be completely unkillable by normal means. Holy shit. And then we have force field. So this is what you were curious about, Lucas. The yeah. juggernaut is capable of generating a personal force field around himself, which greatly enhances his already incredible physical durability to the point the field was even able to withstand direct blows from Mjolnir and survive Thor's God Blast. And do you know about the God Blast? I don't. What's that? It is the most powerful ability Thor has, and it is where he channels all of his godly energy into a single strike, and it is known to be able to shatter planets instantaneously. Like, it oh is the most powerful thing Thor can do, and they basically invented it, just like to solve problems, and Juggernaut's like, nah. But the final thing we have here is the actual crux of the Juggernaut power set, which is irresistible force embodiment. And Lucas, uh, do you know what this is? Um, well, if you say it's like the crux of his power, is that just like when he gets moved and he can't be stopped? Yes, and um, that's why he's called the Juggernaut. So once the Juggernaut begins to advance in a certain direction, it is impossible to halt his movements. Some <laughs> obstacles, such as many tons of rock and plasma discharge cannons, have slowed his pace, but they cannot completely halt him. Oh. Thor's use of his God Blast allowed him to stop the Juggernaut in his tracks. So like, the only exception is, uh, you know, the Deus Ex Machina, the literal Deus Ex Machina they introduced in the form of <laughs> Thor's God Blast. Um, during a battle with War Hulk, the mutant apocalypse increased Hulk's strength by grafting celestial technology to his muscles, which allowed Hulk to increase his strength at will, which also allowed him to stop the Juggernaut. So the two things listed as being able to stop him are Thor using his ultimate mega super chocolatey vagina ability and the Hulk when he can choose to make himself stronger. So even War Hulk needs like extra, extra strength to stop the fucking Juggernaut. Jesus. Um, abilities. Juggernaut is able to summon and remove his mystical armor at will. Wait, what? Yeah, so he can just like, whenever he wants to have his armor on, he can do it. And then That's as a result, mystical armor. <laughs> of course it is. I just thought it's like, I'd, again, like all I know about the Juggernaut is like or what I watched as a kid on like the 90s X-Men show. That's fair, yeah. But no, it's, uh, it's all magical. It's it, everything to do with it. It's all provided by the gem. The, the gem giveth, the gem taketh away. It says here that uh, strength level, class 100 plus estimated. <laughs> okay. The exact limit of Juggernaut's strength varies depending on the level of power Citerac chooses to let him access. Oh, so, so that's varied. like, that's the thing where, oh, but Juggernaut got beat in a fight. It's like, well, yeah, they didn't give him full access to his power right now. They're the writers retconning why he got beaten in fights in the 80s. Yeah. So, oh, he wasn't allowed true, like, full access to his power set then. It says here, weaknesses. If you can believe it, he does have some. Um, Kane okay. was susceptible to exceedingly high levels of mental and mystical attack. For example, Mjolnir was once able to absorb and negate Kane's formerly impenetrable magic force field. So Mjolnir must have been the first ever thing to get through it. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty scary, isn't it? That is. I like how Mjolnir literally made it, like, formally impenetrable. Um, both types of attacks were able to harm him, but neither were shown to cause any type of permanent injury. His weakness to mental attacks was typically nullified by his helmet. And that's why he wears the really cool dome helmet. Uh, yes, it's similar though, to uh, Magneto's helmet, yes. where it's like, he wears that so Charles doesn't fuck with him up, basically. And also so we can't track him via Cerebro. But it says here that yeah. after his latest upgrade, Kane is completely immune to psychic assault, even without his helmet. Uh, if the Juggernaut does not use his powers in a manner approved of by Citerac, the power of the gem does not work correctly, essentially making him human. Also being infused with unstoppable force can be used against him, as the Hulk did during one of their battles. <laughs> Deflecting oh. Kane's charge, causing him to speed away, unable to stop himself. <laughs> <laughs> so he do you know what he did, Lucas? He just did the Smash Bros. Tekka spot dodging. And he just, he just couldn't stop moving. The Hulk just spot dodged Kane's side B and he went off the edge. Oh, <laughs> And then we have it, paraphernalia, equipment, crimson cosmos armor, all these fucking names, comics, man. <laughs> the Juggernaut wears a helmet fashioned from an unknown mystical metal found in the crimson cosmos dimension. 
The Juggernaut subsequently fashioned a skull cap from scraps of the metals used to construct his helmet. This helmet and skull cap provided him with complete protection from telepathic attack, even when it was from telepaths as skilled and powerful as Professor Xavier. It says here that after being stripped of his powers, the Juggernaut took to wearing a suit of armor that resembled his original suit, but was fashioned from, and I quote, unstable molecules. Citation needed. And that's the end. Okay. That's it. And then what? it says no. It says notes in trivia. Um, in the background of the comic Deadline number one, he was seen getting a red X Men logo tattoo on his arm. Okay. Lucas, I fucking love comic books, and I'm so glad that this series took off because we get to talk about dumb comic stuff, and I'm. It just makes me happy. Yeah. Like, just talking I, about the fucking juggernaut. Oh, just get to God. say words like, I, I I got paid money today to say the sentence that the Hulk used a spot dodge to dodge the juggernaut's side B and <laughs> sent him off the edge. And that's incredible. I'm so happy. Thank you for joining us, folks. <laughs>